tonight the topic is, let's go on a date. Should I ask you that, everybody? Where would be a good place in London to go on a date? What and where would you tell me? What, what would be a good place? Where would be a good place to go on a date in London? Shoot at me. I mean, not shoot at me. Shoot. Tell me your answer. Don't shoot at me. Just tell me your answer. Where would be a good place? Pardon me? Where would be a good place? Yeah, man. Yeah. Where would where be a good place to go on a date? You, you don't know? You don't know? Rick's Carrollton? No? Rick's Carrollton? Rick's? Rick's Rod? Give me a good place quick. Where would be a good place to go, to go on a date? My friend, where would be a good place to go on a date? Say Ramsey Gordon Restaurant. Ramsey Gordon Restaurant. Yes? Anybody else? Where would be a good place to go on a date? London. Pardon? London. London Eye would be a lovely place to go on a date. Somebody says Goddard's Dish, Goddard's Kitchen. Somebody? But a lovely place, the, the, the London Eye, a wonderful place to go on a date. I'm saying this to all of us tonight and those online. When you go on a date, you're building intimacy. Intimacy is, is that, as the, the Latin words give all of us, that intimacy has something to do with, with, with impress, inmost, closeness, and being familiar. And intimacy is that strong bond of togetherness and friendship. Strong bond of, of knowing someone. Intimacy is deeper than sex. And going on a date can, can build intimacy. Building physical intimacy, number one, one factor is talk. You talk, you communicate, you talk to build intimacy. That's why those of us who are married and those planning to get married, please spend time talking. Stop the time just looking in your eyes and say, oh, you look so fine. You look so fine. Spend quality time talking. I, I told some, some young people this. You know, learn to, to talk and build that, that level of intimacy. There was this young girl, you know, that this, this guy was talking with her and he would WhatsApp her. And every time she would say, LOL. How is your day? <laughs> LOL. How are you? LOL. How is cool? LOL. My mom just died. LOL. For goodness sake, have something to talk about. And you build, you know, you build intimacy. And it's more than just these fanciful words, you know what I mean? Trying to sweep persons off their feet, telling them, well, you know, if it were possible, I could always destroy the alphabet and I will only keep two letters. You and I. Don't use that, please. Don't use that. Don't use that. Don't use that, please. Or you tell her, girl, you look so tired. Then she'll ask you why. Then you'll tell her, well, you were running through my mind all night. <laughs> don't use that. Don't use that. <laughs> but share time. You know, share, share, share yourself. Use the time to share yourself and to build intimacy in church. Don't just sit in the corner and say to yourself, well, we are all told to work out your salvation in fear and trembling, and you are doing it by yourself. Build bonds in church. Don't just come in and be by yourself. Build bonds. And that's why we are all one big happy family. What I like about church is that it is not about just me and not just about you. It is all of us. We are all different in the church. We all have different personalities. Thank God. We all have different personalities. But we are one body. Somebody say amen. amen. This world doesn't need all people like me. The, need, the world needs people like you and you and you and you. And also me. Spend time talking with each other. You want to know why the church doesn't have love? Because you also must show yourself friendly. And talk. Build bonds, build intimacy. To build intimacy also too would be sharing of things and gifts. I know you people love to receive gifts. So just buy a gift out, you just go and buy a gift. Just because you passed down there in central London, saw a lovely gift and just, you would just buy the gift. Building intimacy. But also what we can do with things would also be 
sharing confidence, sharing trust, where persons can believe us. There's some people that we just can't believe. If they tell you walk, you better run. And then there's time. Time builds intimacy. That's why in the last days, we're told, well, don't forsake. Not coming together with your brothers and sisters. And that's why tonight I want to say thanks to all of you for coming. Because I know you could have been someplace else doing something else. My visitors, thank you also for coming. But what it does is you spend time with each other. You're building community as a church. And families, please spend time. Not because that you're seven-day Venice. It does not mean that you are automatically will have, have strong and solid families. You've got to spend time. Spend time. And spend the time will call for working at your family too. You remember, you remember, you remember Re 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 Rebecca? Isaac's wife. You remember that she was chosen for him? She was chosen for him. But then she's still tricking. <laughs> so what it means, everybody is, you still got to work at your family, spend time. When I was younger, not so long ago. <laughs> when I, I mean, this, now is my, this now is my 20th year in ministry, my friend. My 20th year in ministry. And before, I mean, when I was young, when I came in the church, when I came in ministry, I mean, I was youth director, I was doing all kinds of things. And I was out there all the time, all the time, all the time. And my, my, my daughter, she is a budding artist. Now she's, she's doing, she's doing um, art back home in Barbados. She wants to be an artist, graphic design artist and animation, all these things. But from young, she was doing her artistic stuff. So when I was out all the time doing God's work, as I would have, she drew a picture. My daughter drew a picture where at a beach. She drew a lovely beach scene. Had the waves in the right places and, and the beach scene all well. But she had three people at the beach. She had my wife, her mom. She had herself there. She had her brother, her twin brother, Dylan. And I asked her, Donna, where is, where is daddy? She said, daddy is at work. In her young mind, she didn't see me around everybody. And she, she only had three people in the picture. And that shook my heart. I said, by the grace of God, I will not allow her just to draw three people in the picture again. I must be in that shop. Out of pack up stuff, say no, spend some time, and by God's grace now, as she draws, she has daddy in the picture. Amen. It comes about by spending time. I don't care how much books you read. I don't care how much how much the word of God you know. You gotta spend time. Even with all of us, if you gotta spend time even in the church. And no one another in church. No other life, no other dumb life. Everybody will not be the same. Thank God. Amen. Spend some time. That's physical intimacy. But now spiritual intimacy. With our wonderful God. I was thinking of this. We serve a wonderful God. That our God, he wants to be close to all of us. Brothers and sisters and my friends tonight, the God we serve is a wonderful God. I was doing some research on some gods, and I saw one religion has 300 million gods. I said, wow. But we have, the God we serve is, is one God, but he can do more than 300 million things. Everybody say amen. Yeah. You see the God we serve? We don't carry him. He carries us. We don't sacrifice to him. He has made a sacrifice for us. We don't have to feed him. God feeds us. We serve a wonderful and amazing God. And this God wants to dine with us. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Put it up for me. Revelation 3 and verse 20. Can I read it please? Revelation 3 and verse 20. It says... 
Behold, I stand at the door uh-huh. and knock. See the imagery, everybody. I stand at the door and do what? And knock. And knock. Uh-huh. If any man hear my voice uh-huh. and open the door, uh-huh. I will come into him uh-huh. and will sup with him and he God. with me. God wants the diamonds. And watch this, church. He's at the door, standing, knocking to come in to dine with us. So watch this. So what we have, sir, might not be much, but God will take what we have anyhow. You might be there having just a few things on your stove, metaphorically, but God is saying to you, whatever you have, I will use what you have to give you the blessings that you need. You don't have much, but a little can become much in the master's hands. So whatever you have, God will come in and use that and dine with you. But the beauty of my God is that when he comes in and he will dine with us, when he comes in the second time, he will change the menu. Somebody say amen. Because he comes back and brings another bigger blessing. So this God wants to get close to us. Not simply well that he's up there being great and grand and but God wants to get close to us. Spiritual intimacy being built on talk. And talk num- num- number one, my friends. We are worried about our personal lives, our social life. Young people worrying about how many people snapping them. How many people link them, follow them on Instagram. How many followers they have. How many likes they have, dislikes they have. But I'm saying this to you. Put your focus on your prayer life. Let me tell you this too, my friends, that when you have, when you focus on your prayer life, God will continue to lead you in powerful and wonderful ways. Have you ever tried talking to the person next to you, you talking, they talking, you talking, they talking, and nobody listening to everybody? And our prayer life is not just To come and tell God what we want. And what, you know, God give me this, God give me that. But there are times when we got to come on our knees and simply listen to God. And we listen to God by this. God speaking to us through his word. You want to know, pastor, is that the right way to go? God will not tell you to do something that is against his word. You gotta listen to God. And as a matter of fact, I have another one for you. Do you know the same letters used to spell the word listen are the same letters used to spell the word silent? And it tells us this we have to be silent in order to listen. In these times, we gotta be still and know that God is God. When God tells us that He will do something for us, Let God do it. Stop worrying. Stop trying to interfere with God. Be still and know that God is God. If if you're going to worry, as my granny told me, Dale, if you're going to worry, worry. If you're going to have faith, have faith. Don't have faith and worry too. But talk to God. And one thing I love about God is that when we call upon his name, our God will answer somebody say amen. amen. And that's what we got to get. And that's who we got to get, get close to. And also we have to, in building spiritual intimacy, the whole concept of things. Of things. When we give to God, God will give back to us somebody say amen. amen. I had some friends who were doing economics. They were telling me about some theory called econometrics. I tell them, well, I don't know anything of econometrics. I don't know about trickle-down economics either. But I know about the economics of God. That when you give to God, it comes back to you, somebody say amen. amen. But when it comes back, it comes back pressed down, shaken together, and run over, somebody say amen. amen. I don't know what God will do with it, but it is always blessed. When it comes back to us. Even when we, when we return our tie back to God. 
people want to know how can you give 10%. Well, none, well all 100% belong to God. But when we return our faithful time and give a faithful offering, you see your money will stretch. I don't know how God will do it. That to me, that if you have $100 and you keep all $100, but if you have, but then if some person would give, keep 90 and return 10, you see that the 90 can go further than the 100. I don't know what God would do. God multiplies by dividing. Have you ever tried him, everybody? Return a faithful tithe? And then some person knocked at your door and said, I have something for you. Have you ever returned a, faith, a faithful tithe and loving offering and some person would have taken you out for lunch, saved your money? God will come through for us. And one thing I, I love about my God is that he brings it back. He brings it back to us. The devil will take things away from us. But God will bring them back with a bigger blessing. Building intimacy ultimately with God is spending time. Spending time with God. Genesis 2, 1 and 2. Genesis 2, 1 and 2. It says, reader. Thus the heavens and the earth uh -huh. were finished and all the host of them. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which uh -huh. he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. God entering now the deep relationship of sharing time. And nothing beats sharing time with us. Special time. Quality time. Set aside time. As a matter of fact, this is dating time. This is how God will build intimacy with all of us. Setting aside time to be with us. Let's turn please to Exodus 20. 8 to 11. Exodus 28 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know what, everybody? It says what? Remember. The first word says what? Remember. Remember, just don't forget. And I was doing some research. Amazing, everybody. Got me excited. In the book called Tipping Point. Please hear this. In the book Tipping Point. Written by the, book, the, the guy Malcolm Glad. Malcolm Glad. This is what he said. He said, in the Memory functions like this. Hear me, everybody. I got so excited. Memory functions like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, rest. One, two, three, four, five, six, rest. And you, could you believe it? That in the, the commandment that speaks to remember in our memory, in our prefrontal context, cortex, would tell us about the sound of somebody say amen. amen. So hence memory, memory goes along the line of seven. And memory goes along the line of the seventh day sound of somebody say amen. Don't forget it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rest. You see, even in, in man's brain, the concept ingrained in, in man that memory is about seven is rest. And don't forget, my friends, that on the seventh day, God rested. Yes, next verse. Six days. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Uh-huh. Keep, keep flowing, my friend, keep flowing. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not, not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that was, is within thy gates. Verse 11, yes. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. What a powerful experience, everybody. Involving all of us to come and go on a date. Every seventh day, just let's go on a date. And in that commandment also speaks to the point of the Sabbath being a seal. That is, as we know, certified documents will tell you, well, who the person is. So if your prime minister would write or send a sealed document, it would have Theresa May, prime minister, territory, UK, I mean, England. 
Donald Trump, <laughs> President, United States of America, Frondel Stort, Prime Minister, Barbados. But in the Sabbath, you see the seal, the signature. Well, Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, somebody say amen. amen. His territory, heaven, and also earth. You see, if people would hold to the Sabbath, there will, there will be no atheists in the world. Because the Sabbath tells us that God made heaven and earth. And my value is not in mutation. My value is in God. Somebody say amen. My worth is the fact, well, that God made me. God does not make junk. I am faithfully and wonderfully made. I am stamped and approved by heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. And the creation story is an amazing story. You ever wonder, church, and everybody, that Jesus made, God had made, made, made man, and then let man fall asleep? So even man was not awake when he was making woman. Can you believe Jesus now making woman with man's eyes open? He wants some more here, some more there. So God let him, let him go to sleep well. So you take what you get, somebody say amen. But God's choice is always the best choice, somebody say amen. In the Sabbath, the seal of approval. People ask, Pastor, is the Sabbath still binding? Yes. Watch this. On day number one, he made the light. Day number two, he made the air. Day number three, he made the trees and flowers. Day number four, he made the sun, moon, and stars. Day number five, he made the birds and fish. Day number six, he made the animals, the first two people. On the seventh day, he rested. Let me ask you this. Do we still have the stars? <laughs> Do we still have the moon? Do we still have trees and flowers? You see, we can't get rid of the trees or, or the stars or the moon or animals, and we can't get rid of the Sabbath. The moon is still here. The stars are still here. The animals are still here. Light's still here. And by God's grace, the Sabbath is still here. Amen. Amen. And we don't keep the Sabbath just to, to be saved. But I want to tell you, everybody, that when you have Jesus, you will have a Sabbath. Somebody say amen. amen. And to me, the Sabbath keeping is like this. You have Jesus. And you want that date. So every time sun sets on Friday, you're ready for the day. I have a friend who, when Friday comes around, he must go to the barber shop. I will not call names. I will just give you the initials, Theo. <laughs> Where every time Friday comes around, he will go down to make sure he's sharp and chiseled and nice and cute. Why? Because that is preparing for the date. But you see it in that context. Sabbath will not be a time for you to come and sleep all day, work all week, hard and use the Sabbath to sleep off. No. You're coming into that date to build intimacy. You're eager to come for the Sabbath. Why? Because you're reserved. Yes, on, on, on Monday morning. Yes, on Sunday morning. You're reading your word and having your devotion. But this is your date. And I'm saying this to you. Sabbath keeping is not just you come in there to keep some hours and then go back home. That is what I call going down to central London and buy a ring. Put on a ring. Doesn't mean you're married. You can buy a ring. It doesn't mean that you're married. You need a man. Somebody say amen. amen. So when you have Jesus, that's the man. Yeah. Then the Sabbath will be the ring. Somebody say amen. And you're having a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. And then you won't worry about breaking edges off the Sabbath. Why? Because your focus now is on Jesus. And you're coming for the date. And not only that. Genesis 2 and verse 3. Put it up for me, fr my friend. Genesis 2 and verse 3 says, and what? And God blessed the seventh God day. God did what? Blessed. He blessed, uh-huh. The seventh day and sanctified it. Uh -huh. Because that in it... He had rested from all his work which God created and made. Okay, he blessed, sanctified, he rested. 
God kept the date. I also want to show you this. Not only God kept the date, Luke 4 and verse 16. Luke 4 and verse 16. Let's everybody read together. It says, everybody, it says. And everybody. He came to Nazareth. And he came, who came? That's Jesus came, to, uh-huh. Where he, he had brought been up. brought up. Uh-huh. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So Jesus kept the date. As a matter of fact, this was now Jesus' coming home church. Came back to his home church. Can you picture? Jesus now coming back to church. And like at your church, Chiswick, where you have his name will be in the program. Yes. Name will be in the bulletin. Everybody now come in to open the bulletin to see who's preaching today. Jesus. But when you read the story, the sermon he preached, they didn't like and they want to throw him down the hill. You know when, when we do things that you, that, that you don't like? It was for them. But the, they didn't like the word. And they, they were vexed. And such that when he started, he was Jesus. Welcome home, son. Jesus. But then after he spoke some words and told them, well, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. Bring out liberty. Those are captive. Afterwards, them said, is it this Joseph's son, the carpenter's son? But Jesus kept the date as his custom was. Went to church. Build an intimacy. Not only Jesus did Jesus keep the date, but also let's look at Luke 20, 23, 55 and 56. It and, says, let's read and, together, it says, and the women also, which came with him from Galilee, uh -huh. followed after and beheld the sepulchre. Good, uh -huh. And how 56. his body was laid. 56. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. The disciples, they, they, rest, they, they, they kept the date. You see, Calvary brought dis disappointment. But Calvary did not bring disobedience. Say that again, I'm glad you ask. Calvary brought dis disappointment, but Calvary did not bring disobedience. He died on Friday. But the disciples kept Sabbath. They were disappointed, yes. But they did not disobey and do something else. They kept the date. Not only did the disciples, also Paul, Acts 17 and verse 21. Acts 17 and verse 2, sorry, Acts 17 and verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. It's Paul. I'm Paul, the reform terrorist. Paul, who went to the synagogues and pulled the Christians out. Paul, who was met on the road of Damascus. But I'm so glad that when God meets us and confronts us, I pray that all of us would do like Paul and say, I yield, I yield. And Paul now, and if anyone was to change or to do something different, he would have used the Pauline writings. But Paul, for three Sabbaths, kept the date. Even after the resurrection of Jesus, Paul kept the date. But not only that, let's look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 42. Acts 13 and verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out... When the who, everybody? The Jews. When the Jews were gone, uh-huh, so, uh-huh. Out of the synagogue, right. the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. She said, the Sabbath is not the Jewish Sabbath. It's not the Seventh-day Baptist Sabbath. It's not the Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath. The Sabbath belongs to the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. And there was the Jews went out the, temp the synagogue, the temple... And the Gentiles stayed in. And they didn't come the next day. The next day would have been the Sunday. But they came the next Sabbath. 
You want to know when the Sabbath is? You saw it too with the disciples. Jesus was crucified on Sabbath, but on, on Friday, kept the Sabbath, came Sunday morning. Friday being preparation day. And also, let me say this. If I should announce a big, big flyover plane, like how the planes that had at the one of the stadiums that had stadium around St. Warm plane said, Wenger out. And the other plane had Wenger in. If I should have rent one of those planes to say, well, come and get $7 million on the seventh day from Chiswick. You know when, when, when the people, would, everybody would come? They'll come on a Saturday. Jesus kept the day. The disciples kept the day kept the date. Paul kept that date. The Gentiles kept the date. And all of us too, we have to keep the date. And not simply as a badge of honor to say, well, that, that we are better than anybody else. But we're keeping the date because we know Jesus. And we're coming to worship him, somebody say Amen. And we're coming every Sabbath to have that wonderful date. So Sabbath keeping is not just from sunset Friday to sunset on Saturday. Sabbath keeping, real Sabbath keeping too, is having your mind all during the week that you're preparing for a date. And you're preparing for a date with Jesus. Let's go on a date. And not only that too, is in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, 8 and 9. Turn there please. Hebrews 4, 8 and 9. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Uh-huh. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people. There remaineth for what, everybody? A rest. There remaineth a rest. Mm, to there remaineth a rest. date. Not just a date, a date. Yes? Therefore, to, uh, therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that is entered into this rest, he also has ceased from his own work as God did from his. I am so glad well that we have a date. A date with our maker. Date where we can come and rest just from our weary and, and worrisome ways. I'm, I'm glad well that we can come and rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. I'm glad too that we all can sing the song and welcome, welcome, welcome God's holy Sabbath day. I'm glad that we all can sing, well, a day of rest and gladness. A day of joy and life. I'm glad we all can sing, everybody, that rest. That rest in Jesus. But as we rest, we also rest in knowing that salvation is in Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. We rest in also knowing too. That we are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. We are sinners, but we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. So when we come and worship God in Sabbath, we worship him as creator. When we come on Sabbath and worship him, we worship him also as redeemer. And we know well that thank God for the Sabbath. So as we share, everybody, sharing time is the key to building intimacy. You want to grow your relationship with God? Spend time with him. Yes, in morning prayer. Yes, in, but spend time with God on the Sabbath. Don't let Sabbath become so burdensome. I don't know about here, but back home we have, you better call a meeting on Sabbath to grab the folks. This buddy got a meeting after church. This one got a meeting after the meeting. The other one got a meeting after the meeting. And the other one got a meeting before the meeting, after the meeting, before the meeting. You got to catch them when you can. And Sabbath can be meeting to, from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. But I plea, I'm praying for this church that we all would find time to meet with God. Be 
because sharing time is building intimacy. Getting close to God. And to keep his Sabbath, you got to first have him. And when you have him, you have the ring and you have the man. The ring being the Sabbath, the man being Jesus. And tonight, you want a deeper relationship with God. He's calling us back to true Sabbath worship. Calling us back to spending quality time with him. Have a strong devotional life. Don't just run in there and catch the tube and jump in your car and stuff. Take time to pray. Bring your family to God. Bring yourself to God. Find time to pray. And watch this. If Jesus found time to pray, Jesus who was fully God and fully man, if he found time to pray, how much more than all of us who are weak and feeble and, and frail, we must find time to pray. We can find time to do all kinds of things. Let us find time to pray. But let us find time. Find time. To have true Sabbath worship. Because it is a day before God. And we want to get close. Tonight everybody, God is calling us. Calling us. He wants to get close to us. Calling us to come to him. So indeed, so indeed that all of us can be drawn closer to our God. I want to ask a question tonight. Do you want to get close to God? And if that is your desire, my friend, just, just stand to your feet. You want to get close to God, just stand to your feet. You want to get close to him. Amen. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. That's his name. And tonight you want a purpose in your heart. That indeed that you would indeed get close to God. Bible study, prayer, listen to him. But you want to improve your Sabbath keeping by first getting close to God. And tonight as we do that that lovely hymn. It says, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. What I love church, what I love about church is that there's no big I and small U's. We don't come here to just beat people over the heads. And, but we're all in it together all in it together. You want to improve your relationship with God. So in turn, you can improve your Sabbath keeping. You want to have the man Jesus so you can then hold the ring which is the Sabbath. And tonight you want to say, God, I want to get so close to you and improve my prayer life, my devotional life, and improve my Sabbath keeping. As we sing this song, just come on down so we can pray for you. As we close. All to Jesus, the song says. All. Oh, let's go. All. All. Come on down so we can pray for you. Come on. Come on. You want to get close to God? Come. Come on, come on.